Hi everyone, so I just wanted to go a little more in depth um, in regards to my last video. First, uh, the quote that I used, I got distracted because there was a storm coming in during that time. Uh, so the quote was actually, um, and it's attributed to Einstein, but no one really knows whether it Einstein really said it or not. And that is, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, we'll spend its entire life thinking that it is stupid. And what is meant by that is everyone has a different area of a genius. Everyone has certain talents, certain abilities, um, and to just kind of take a school full of children and say, well, you need to be good in this or not, and if you're not, then you're not smart, uh, really can damage their self-esteem. And it's not accurate, because everyone has uh, different learning styles and everyone has different talents and abilities. And our job as adults, as parents, as educators, um, as people that affect children's lives uh, to make sure that um, they learn in the way that they need, um, that they learn in their learning styles. And there's usually, there's three to four known learning styles on um, visual, children that learn best um, through seeing things, whether that's writing or whether that's uh, pictures, and these are the children or the students, they don't have to be children, who memorize well and do well if they are given highlighters and their notes are highlighted in different colors, that helps to trigger their memory. Then there are the, your auditory learners, and auditory learners learn best from sound. So they're more able to remember the teacher talking about uh, the subject matter or someone discussing the subject matter as opposed to reading about it in a book. And these are also the children that oftentimes will make the good um, group learners uh, the study group learners, they're going to learn well if they're discussing things. And then you have your kinesthetic le learners, and these are the people that learn best if they can actually get it in their hands. So people that tend to be very mechanical. And then of course you have, you know, different things. You know, your, your right brain, your left brain, left brain is seen to be more of the logical side, right brain is more creative and artistic. Um, some people are better at math. Some people are better at uh, reading and languages. I happen to not be very good at math, um, but I love to read. I've been reading uh, thick novels, uh, like big paperback books, uh, since second grade, ever since I had a woman that was like an adopted grandmother to me, give me uh, two books, Anne of Avonlea and Akin to Anne, which were both, you know, several hundred pages. And that is really what fueled my love of reading and my desire to read, and I love to read, and I love to learn, but mathematics is not my strong suit. And then there are people that are very artistic, or they're very musical, they're very kinesthetic and they're very good with ha their hands. And it's important that we understand that children have different talents and different abilities and that we need to encourage them in their skills that they already have. That doesn't mean that they can't brush up and work to strengthen their weaknesses, but we really need to put an emphasis on what they're already good at and to encourage them in that and the things that they already like to do that they have an aptitude for and help them understand that 
Uh, they have their own genius. And it doesn't matter, you know, we put so much emphasis on standardized testing now, but not every child is going to do well with standardized testing. Not every child is going to uh, learn best that way, or succeed well that way. And when we have this idea that, you know, if you don't score high on standardized testings for math and reading uh, and writing, that then you're not intelligent and you're not smart, it can really damage a child's self-esteem. And then in regards to listening fatigue, it is very hard um, to try and focus and have to concentrate on hearing someone talk when you are struggling to understand what they're saying. That is very difficult. And lip reading is not easy. Most, um, they're not most, but a lot of words the lip shapes are about the same. You know, if you can say like pet and da, you know, so that's different, but how about pet and ka, or da and ka? You know, the sound is more in the back of the throat. And I, having to decipher what someone is saying by the use of lip reading can be very difficult especially if you're not hearing certain sounds. Yeah, and a lot of people that have hearing loss, they're not hearing uh, consonants or they're kind of indistinguishable. Uh, you know, S, sh, I say sh, 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 T, H, F, K, P, D, all of those can sound very similar, or maybe you can't really hear them at all. And uh, having to learn and to listen for extended period, periods of time to a teacher or an instructor, and then have, your mind has to fill in all of those blanks can be very difficult and can be very tiring and exhausting. And I'll link the studies, I'll find the studies for you, but. There are studies that show that children who have hearing loss um, and that experience listening fatigue, that their main streams in the classroom with oral education as opposed to uh, using ASL or the sign language in, the, in that child's country, that they will experience fatigue at a greater rate than even a child who has a chronic illness. Uh, so that's really something to keep in mind that for children who have hearing loss, you need to give them breaks. Um, if you're a teacher and you have a child that is hard of hearing or deaf in your s school and you're teaching with oral education, you need to give them breaks. You need to uh, give them time uh, to be away from noise. As some people refer to it as like deaf time. Um, it's just a lot for the brain to take in and it's a lot of stress. You need to be able to make sure you are talking face to face so that they can see your lips um, and then repeat things as necessary, but they will need time to uh, be away from everything and to be away from the noise and allow their brains to rest and recharge. So I just wanted to touch on that and I will talk to all of you later, bye.